Rachel Maskell. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I start by saying that my honourable friend, the member for Hull West and Hessel, has summed up the importance of today's debate. Yeah, yeah. The reality is, is that care doesn't come for nothing. It costs money, yeah. and it's about where the priorities of this government actually sit. We hear the talks of millions and billions so many times, and yet the very people in our society who need that care, that special care, are looked over so many times. I want to start by really thanking the staff at City of York Council for their incredible work that they do for my city and have in very difficult times over the last four years, often where decisions are made which they don't agree with, yet have complied as servants of our people against the backdrop of losing a fifth of their wages in real terms. And as my honourable friend, the member for Crewe and Lampwich, highlighted how care workers in particular are paid so poorly. Why? They are women. And the fact is, this government takes it that women won't go out and strike, women won't fight, and they will care instead because that they know how desperately people need their, their, their labour and desperately need them to visit and if they don't turn up that day, that somebody is going to be worse off. And that is why the money isn't put in that place, because they care and because they're women. And the inequality, which is bedded so deeply now into our system, just highlights to me how broken the funding system is around local government. Beyond that, though, we know that um, local government itself does, does not get the investment, yet it is where the change can really happen. And we heard earlier about how Labour brought in a place-based system, looking at how we get the interconnectivity of different lines of funding. And now we see the fragmentation, the diktats from government, and then the pulling apart in local communities. And I see that reflected in my local area as well. The whole system of funding is broken, and it is not being spread out where the greatest need is either. And just returning to the issue of older people, I just want to highlight this. In this place, we only talk about older people with regards to social care and pensions, which are seen as financial burdens on the state, not about how the state can invest in these really precious lives and to ensure that their rights are upheld right to the end. And that's why, as chair of the all-party parliamentary group around ageing and older people, we set out uh, 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 an inquiry into the rights of older people, the human rights of older people. And it came back saying it is absolutely vital that there is a commission around the rights of older people. And I've written to both the ministers sat on the front bench, and I have to say the response I've had is woeful. When we're talking about the rights, the voice, the opportunity the future of older people and just dismissed. And that is why I believe that we've seen this delay in social care, green paper, which is, let's face it, a discussion document. It's not going to change anything. It's that the prioritisation that is being placed on the most vulnerable pe people in our society is wrong. And we have got to see change. And of course, if we talk about wider change, the funding for local authorities as well. It's a broken system. I look at business rates and I've debated it many times in this place. And of course, as the high streets are being hollowed out, we're seeing the business rate return even less and therefore um, the dependency of local government now to depend on business rates does not work. And of course, we see precepts, which again is regressive, and we see council tax, which at its concept was a stopgap of a failed poll tax system. So we need to look at funding in a very, very different way as we move forward for local authorities. But it isn't just about funding, it's how funding interconnects with the social ambition that our councillors have. And I have to say that Labour in York has a very different vision than the current administration. They have just let the market move in profit-obsessed developers now building luxury apartments all over our city, which, quite frankly, people in York can't afford. We're one of the lowest wage economies in the North. We saw wages fall in York, £66 last year. We are below £80 per week less 
um, pay than um, the national average. We're a post-industrial city. We are struggling, and yet people are exploiting our city, building just plans agreed by the Council two weeks ago to put 2,000 luxury flats in the middle of our city when we have got a housing crisis. We had 11 people die on our streets last year. We've got families in cramped one-bedroom box rooms, staying whole families, and they're damp as well. It is completely unacceptable what is happening on the ground in local authorities. And it's the responsibility of government to wake up to the reality. I don't want to hear platitudes. I want to see action. And when I think of York as being the most inequitable city outside of London, mm. and I see the inequality in life expectancy in my city, it is showing there is failure in the system. It may work for some, but it certainly isn't working for the many. Labour's vision for our city is very different. We want to see the investment back in the people. We want to give people a voice back in their city to build their future. And that is what we will do should we come into power on the 2nd of May. We have seen people come and exploit our city, the post office being sold, Booth and Park Hospital being sold, the money not coming back into our city, the barracks being sold handing over these sites to developers who, quite frankly, just want to make money. They don't want to invest in people. So we have got to see change, a change in approach as we move forward. Our city itself is, is crying out for that. We are seeing um, the city looking shabby now and, and dirty. We're seeing, um, for instance, um, waste um, in, in not being addressed. We are seeing recycling rates falling we are seeing the issues that people care about in our communities not being addressed. But Labour is ambitious. We will put in place a Transport Commission to address the air pollution, which is taking 150 lives a year in our city. We will make it a carbon neutral city by 2030, more ambitious by far than this government. We will ensure that we invest in those green spaces because we know it's better holistically for people's health. So we will make those connectivities and join the dots mm. as we move forward. And why do that in York? Well, you only need to look back 100 years ago when Seaborne Roundtree first of all, carried out his studies around poverty in our city, something we will do with a Fairness Commission um, should we get elected in May, looking at the real deprivation that exists in our city. And then from that, the Roundtree family built the jobs, built the housing, put in the education, put in the pension systems, put in the leisure and the pleasure that people should enjoy in their everyday life. And we built York out of the, the slums that it had become. And that is what Labour will do again, Indeed. should we be given that opportunity on the 2nd of May, not only to analyse what has gone wrong because it is there for everyone to see, but to give people the security that they deserve and the hope for their future so that they can join us on this journey to build a compassionate, humane city as we move forward.